Hey everyone, wanted to do a quick video on some oil painting techniques and I, I want to take some of the intimidation factor away from from oil painting. A lot of people are scared to start oil painting. It just feels overwhelming to them. And so I just want to tell you some simple things that maybe you, you haven't heard other places. Just really fundamental, simple things. So first thing is how you hold the brush. You can see my hand's not in this frame, right? I'm holding the brush pretty far back. That's a great way to start. You get a lot more control. Now also, what you can see me doing here is altering my brush orientation. Now what I mean by that is I'm kind of tilting the brush, right? So a lot of times people forget you can paint with the brush, you know, sideways like that, very flat. You can turn it a little bit. You can also paint a line like that. And I'll go back over this and, and you know, make, this, uh, make that line a little bit more clear. But you can turn it completely to the side. And, and the more crisp the edge of your brush the more flat and the more straight that line will be, you know, and, and so don't forget that when you're using a brush, don't forget that you can do that, you know, and also don't forget to vary your pressure. Okay. So this first one, uh, this first stroke I'm making there is a, is a little bit of a, a medium level pressure. You know, now I'm going to press very lightly. Now see a little bit of texture comes in. It doesn't quite grab on there. Now I'm going to push really hard. This is what everybody does when they first start. They push really hard. Now, sometimes you want to do that. Sometimes you want that effect, but not every time. You know, so remember to keep in mind varying pressure. Now, those are just some quick tips on how to handle the brush, but also what people neglect is the use of medium. You have to be able to use medium properly. Take a look at this. You can see I'm putting this in very, very thin. This is a ton of medium put in there, barely any paint. You know, it's very thin down, and my medium is usually a solvent and some sort of oil in there uh, typically. But now look at this. This is just barely... Uh, just a little bit of medium added there, right? Now I can get this sort of juicy stroke. It's almost like the paint becomes like a, a, a the consistency of mayonnaise almost or something like that. And you can very lightly touch the canvas and get some great strokes. Really pay attention to how much medium you're using. It will have a big effect on, on how your paint, you know, looks on the canvas. Uh, also, what kind of works in tandem with that is how you can apply paint. You can do it wet over wet. You can see I'm putting down some thick sort of wet paint there and I'm going to come over top of this. I'm going to use just a little bit of medium so it grabs on there and, and I'm going to put some wet paint over top of that. If I use the right amount of pressure, if I don't push too hard and I have the right amount of medium there, I can drop that right over top. You'll see here. Look at that. It just goes right over top and it, and it sort of blends a little bit, right? sort of blends a little bit. Now, if I want to apply paint in a dry brush method, you know, I'll just do it straight over top of the canvas here. You can wait for other paint layers to dry and then work over top of them too, but I won't use any medium at all pretty much, you know, maybe or maybe just a little bit and I'll go straight over it like that and you can see because it's dry underneath it gets this rough sort of uh, you know, textured look to it. And I'm not forcing that on there. That's just what it looks like. It gets that textured, rough look to it. So of course, if you're doing a more textured object, brick, the ground, something like that, it makes more sense to use this method. So you can also apply paint in those two different ways. And I use them both. I use everything you've seen here, I use on, on almost every painting. Unless I'm doing a very particular study or something, I, I don't try to limit myself on, on what I'm going to do. I use whatever's appropriate for that particular area of a painting. So here you can see me putting some of those principles to use. I've added a little bit of medium to my paint, and that's what's keeping it flowing like it is. And, and I'm turning my brush on its side and just very gently pressing on the surface of the canvas and letting it sort of drag off so I can get that nice, thin, sharp line. And when I'm doing a block in like this, and I'm just, you know, I'm trying to get an idea of where the you know, shadows are and where the lights are and, and all of that. I want to keep it thin. I don't want it to be, you know, very thick and goopy paint. I don't, I don't want it to be like that. I just want it to be very, very thin. And uh, I just want some indications there so that when I come in later, uh, you can, I can go come back to it and, and work over top of it without having to fight that. You can also see in the mixture that's there on my palette that I've added medium to that, a certain amount of medium. You know, it's, it's just, it's not running. It's not like a thin pool. It's not uh, super thin. You know, it's it's just the right amount. If you add too much, it'll be too watery. If you add too little, it'll be too thick and hard to use. So you have to find that sweet spot. Now here I'm letting the paint run out a little bit. And you can see I'm just kind of scrubbing in there. So I have a little bit of medium in there. But I, I'm, not, I'm not pressing too hard, but I'm pressing a little bit harder. And that's what I'm saying. You can vary your pressure to get different effects. And now I'm jumping forward a little bit to show you 
where this would go in terms of the block in and and uh, you can see when I'm when I'm you know blocking in those areas I'm, I'm really indicating the lights and the darks you know what's what's happening with the lighting and uh, I'm just using you know varied pressure to get those different effects of the paint you want to remember too that this is the beginning of the painting so I know I'm gonna be working over top of this you know and and I have to be careful you know, in, in every stage of the painting process, you always want to be careful and you always want to use the right amount of of pressure, the right amount of medium and things like that. But especially in this stage, I don't want it building up too much, you know, and I know I'm going to have to make changes too. That's the other thing. If I put down a whole ton of paint and put it down very, very thickly, I can't make any changes to this, right? I can't come back and, or, or I can make changes, but it's a very, very difficult process. So I need something there to indicate, you know, what's there on the original, but I can't go too thick. So I have to find that sweet spot, like I said, and really try to, you try to, you know, uh, get the paint to work for me in that regard. I'm talking about being careful and, and being sensitive and things like that. Uh, there's also a side where uh, I see uh, new individual individuals that have just started painting. They don't use enough paint. Uh, they try to get by with so little. And then what happens is they end up adding so much medium to their paint to try to make it go further, you know. And so uh, I'm not doing that, though. I, you know, I'm talking about keeping it light and keeping, you know, a nice layer there. But I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm still using quite a bit of paint. I'm just modifying it with the medium. So now you can see me here going in and dropping in some color indications, right? I'm, I'm sticking to mostly two colors with white added, okay? So it'll be, you know, cadmium red plus yellow ochre plus white for that, you know, red area on the face or, or you know, different things like that. So I'm trying to stick with two color mixtures so that the color is stronger. And I'm also not over mixing it on my palette. You don't see me sitting there mixing it, mixing it, mixing it. You know, when I take two colors and, and, and blend them together like I've done there, I'm not mixing it, mixing it, mixing it a ton and, and making it flat. That will flatten out the color. Um, and also, of course, you can see I'm, I'm dipping in my medium jar there. Uh, it's right there. You see me dip in and, and um, it, I'm trying to get the right consistency as well. And here I'm definitely working wet into wet. You can see here that, that I'm working over top of wet paint. I'm putting down that layer. And then as I put down another stroke, I have to consider the fact that the next stroke that I put down, because the paint underneath is wet, it's going to blend with it a little bit. So that's going to change the lightness or the darkness of it. That's going to change the color of it. You know, I have to think about all those things um, as I'm mixing. So if I'm putting, if there's a very light area and I uh, create a mixture and then I put a stroke down over top of it and it's wet in that area, you know, it's going to lighten whatever I put on there. So if I try to put a dark stroke over top of a light area, it's going to lighten that dark stroke. I need to, you know, be careful knowing that stuff is going to mix on the canvas when it's wet on wet. When I come back to this and it's dry, I can work over top of it and get a dry brush effect. But primarily what I'm doing right now is wet into wet brushwork. Um, so I'm, I'm being very careful with my sensitivity. You know, not pushing too hard. If I push too hard, that starts to blend the paint too much because it's all wet, you know? Um, so you can see. But but one of the advantages of working wet into wet like this is that you can get nice soft edges. You can get nice transitions, like on the cheek where there's this very soft, rounded area where it's a very slow transition from the darks to lights. I can get that nice and soft, you know? I can, I can, I can you know, work the paint back and forth you know, into itself so that it becomes this nice soft edge and, and that's a real advantage of working while the paint is still wet. Now, I also want you to look at my palette. You see those brushes that are sitting there unused? Uh, I, I will use different brushes for different areas. If I have a very orange area like on this fabric, I will dedicate a brush to that. If I have a brush that I'm using for that skin tone, it's all kind of similar in value and in color, I will use a brush for that. You know, if something's very blue, like a, like a sky in a landscape, I will, I will use a brush just for that. You know, and, and, and I try to think that way in a smart way of how to, how to use my brushes because I don't want to taint my colors that came out of the tube. So, you know, on the palette there, on the side, on the right side where you're looking at that, you know, and we're looking at my palette upside down, but, you know, it's that right side where all the colors straight out of the tube have come from. When I dip into that, you know, when I dip into those those pure colors, if I've got anything on my brush that's going to mix with them, it'll start to taint that color. So I can't 
just grab from everything, mix up a bunch of paint, then, then keep you know using all these different colors. If I do that, I'm going to end up with something that's not very vibrant at the end, you know? Um, and so you have to keep those tube colors, as you place them on your palette, you have to keep them very, very pure. And sometimes that means you have to wipe off your brush in between strokes. Sometimes that means you have to clean it. Occasionally, you have to do that. Um, but keep those colors that you put on your palette, the, the colors that come out of the tube, keep them very, very clean and pure so that you know when you're creating a new mixture, you're, you're not using a tainted one, you know? If I have blue on my brush and I reach into the, the you know, uh, cadmium orange, I'm going to start to mix like this grayish brown, you know? It's going to start to do that. If I do that too many times, the cadmium orange now becomes this really dull version of itself. So you just have to be really careful of that as well. Now you can see I'm not over mixing. And you can also see on my palette where I'm only using two colors. Why? Because you can see these little pools of color or little areas of color and they're not, uh, they're each individual. So whenever I have a new area like that, I'm creating a new mixture, a new value, which is, a, which is the level of light or dark and a new color. And you can see I'm, I'm still working wet into wet. Now, what I had to do here was, this was, this painting was dry. This was coming back uh, the next session and working on this. I had to put some medium down over top of this, get a nice working surface, and then I had to lay some paint down. So see, I've laid paint down in that area, new, fresh paint. Now I can create those transitions. So I sort of, I have to match what I had before. I sort of have to figure out what that mixture was and, 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 and duplicate it again, put that paint down, and then go over top of it in order to get that to work. Um, and, and so I am working wet into wet here. I'm not going straight over it with, with a dry brush. I just had to put a whole new layer of paint down in that one area before I could really start, uh, you know, getting all these transitions and getting all this stuff working right. You can see I've shifted from uh, painting largely to painting much more small now. Uh, I, I originally started with very big strokes, very big indications for the values and the color, and now I'm working in a much more surgical fashion much smaller, and that's going to carry, carry me through to the finish. Now, if any of you are looking at this and you're getting really excited and you feel like, I, I want to do something like this, I want to be able to do this, uh, I do have a class at schoolism.com called Essentials of Realism. And what it does is break down the foundation that you need to do something like this. Uh, it, it breaks it down, the class breaks it down to proportion, value, edge, and color. And we explore each of those concepts fully. You learn first how to control them, and then you also learn how to manipulate them and change them to suit uh, your own goals. You know, so I, I would encourage anybody that's interested to, uh, to check that out, and uh, I look forward to teaching you. But hopefully these principles here that I've been showing you on oil painting have helped. Oil painting is hard. It's, it's no joke. It's, it's really difficult. You know, but if you can just put some of these things in practice, get a little bit more control over how you lay paint down, how you manage the paint, how you mix, how you handle all of that, it'll make a big difference in your art.